Welcome to Philosophy Vibe. My name is George and today I want to present to you my top five mind-bending philosophies about our reality. Now, as a philosophy-focused channel, we have looked into so many different philosophies in so many different areas, but within the realm of metaphysics and the philosophy of perception, there are certain theories that are just so fascinating and really stand out. Now, there's no denying that our reality has so many questions left unanswered, from where did it all begin, to how is it all sustained, to even is the reality we perceive really real. With these gaps in our knowledge, philosophers have stepped in to fill them, and through this work, we've been introduced to some wildly intriguing theories. So today, I want to list my favourite five philosophical theories about our reality, with a short explanation on each. And if you're really interested in any of these theories, my friend John and I have debated them all at length. Those videos are available on the channel, so if you want to look into them further, Philosophy Vibe has you covered. I will drop a link to our videos on each of these theories in the description. And with that, let's begin. Pantheism. The universe is God. Or at least that's what the pantheists believe. That's right. Pantheism is the belief that the atheists have got it wrong in believing there is no God. But the theists have also got it wrong in believing that God is a separate being that created the universe. Rather, the universe itself, everything around us, the totality of reality is in fact God. Popularised by the 17th century philosopher Baruch Spinoza, pantheism has a lot of logical sense. Theists often claim that God is all-knowing and omnipresent. Well, of course, if the universe is everything and the universe is everywhere, then yes, God is everything and God knows everything because all truth and states of affairs are all part of the universe. More so, we expect God to be a conscious, self-aware being, and one can argue the universe is not self-aware. But is that accurate? You are self-aware. You are a conscious being and you are part of the universe. So yes, indeed, the universe has consciousness. We notice different levels of consciousness too, from insects to animals to humans. And why should the parts be more complex than the whole? You wouldn't necessarily say that the cells in your body have consciousness, yet they all contribute to you. They all make you a profoundly conscious self-aware being. So, perhaps, our level of consciousness, along with every other conscious being in the universe, together, makes a conscious, self-aware universe at a level, we would expect, of a god. Idealism The reality we perceive solely exists in our minds. There is no physical external world, only ideas. Or, so say the idealists. This is a brilliant early modern philosophy that evolved through different theories. The 17th century philosopher John Locke, although not an idealist, he did notice that much of what we perceive only exists in the mind and not in the external world. Consider taste, smell, physical sensations, even colour. These are solely the products of the mind, they don't exist in the external world. John Locke however argued things like shape, texture, length, these all exist in the external world and they create the mind-dependent ideas. However, the philosopher George Berkeley then went a step further and said, even these things, shape, texture, size, even these are mind-dependent ideas and we have no reason to believe that anything exists outside of our minds. Berkeley completely rejected the existence of matter and yes, there were some great logical steps taken to adopt this belief. When we hold an object, let's say an apple, all we actually have direct access to is our ideas. The colour, the texture, the taste, the smell, this is all in our minds. So if we only have access to mental ideas, why should we believe there is anything beyond this? It is actually more likely that all of reality just exists in our minds as this is all we have access to. We don't need to believe in a physical external world. But, you may argue, how then do we all have the same perception of reality if there is no physical external reality outside of our minds? Well, firstly, do we have the same perception of reality? I do not and cannot know what you see when you refer to red or green or blue. Why do you hate the taste of steak when I love it, etc, etc. But ultimately, we do share some sort of sustained reality. So, 
Barclay argued that the reality is ordered and sustained by God, meaning all of reality is in the infinite mind of God. That's a lovely thought, we are just ideas in God's mind. Simulation theory. All of reality is nothing more than a computer simulation and we are just conscious programs being run in a simulated world by our tech advanced overlords. As such, we have simulation theory. Popularized by movies such as The Matrix, the logic behind this theory makes it very convincing. Developed by the philosopher Nick Bostrom, the theory goes like this. Look how far our technological advancements have progressed in such a short space of time. Now, think how this will continue to evolve and what we'll be able to do. It is entirely reasonable to imagine that we will one day be able to run computer simulated realities with conscious computer programs. We would run these realities to study history or hypothetical scenarios to see how they would pan out. It's also likely that once we have the technology to run these sophisticated simulated realities, we would be using them constantly and there would probably be millions if not billions of computer simulated realities being run. But then, think of the probabilities. If there can be billions of simulated realities and only one real base reality, then the probability that this is the real reality is one in a billion, making it far, far more likely that we live in a computer simulated reality and we are nothing more than conscious programs. Quite frightening. Modal realism. Everything that can exist does exist in an infinite series of possible worlds. This is the philosophy of modal realism. Now, philosophers often use possible worlds during debates and formulation of theories. They are used to determine possible truths from necessary truths. They are used to formulate hypothetical scenarios to see how theories will play out. But the metaphysical question was put forward. How should we view these possible worlds? There's no question that possible worlds have some type of existence, as we're clearly talking about them and using them all the time. But what kind of existence do they have? In what sense do they exist? To this fascinating metaphysical question, the philosopher David Lewis claimed that all possible worlds do exist as concrete actual worlds in an infinite reality. The logic for this is interesting and it goes as follows. If there is a possible truth, it can only be a possible truth if it obtains in a possible world. And so in order for the truth to obtain, it needs a world to obtain in. And so a possible truth needs a possible world and that possible world needs to exist to be real, to be concrete, so the truth can exist as a truth. So every possible thing that could exist does exist in an actual concrete world somewhere out there in the infinity of reality. So. Is it logically possible for me to be a king? Yes, I'm not a king in this world, but it is logically possible. There's no logical contradiction in me being a king. So therefore, there exists a possible world where I am in fact a king. There is a possible world where you are an astronaut or a movie star, or perhaps you are discussing philosophy on the internet and I'm watching you. Every possible thing that could exist does exist in another possible world. If it's logically possible, it really does happen. How amazing, somewhere out there I'm actually a king. If you're watching this video and you've come this far into it, then clearly you have a deep mind and are a philosophy enthusiast. So, if you would like to explore more of the wonderful world of philosophy, then please check out the Philosophy Vibe Paperback Anthology book set. For those not too familiar with this channel, my friend John and I have spent years discussing and debating loads of different philosophical theories on this YouTube channel. We have compiled the scripts of these videos into three excellent books that are ideal for those interested or getting into philosophy. We have Volume 1, The Philosophy of Religion, Volume 2, Metaphysics, and Volume 3, Ethics and Political Philosophy. These books will break down all the core Western philosophical ideas into easily digestible debates. So by the end of reading the three books, you will have a really great grasp on a wide area of Western philosophy. So yes, if you are interested in philosophy as a subject, these books are perfect for you. They're all available on Amazon and I'll put the links below. So then, our final mind-bending theory about reality is... Solipsism. 
You are the only mind that exists. That's right. You are the only conscious being in reality. In fact, all of reality is in your mind. No one else is conscious or even exists. Everything around you, the whole of reality is just your dream created and sustained by your mind. Or so the solipsist believes. Perhaps the most egotistical and narcissistic philosophy out there, but annoyingly so, it does have some merit. Said to have originated by the philosopher René Descartes, he pondered the fact that he often had dreams that were indistinguishable from reality. And so if his senses had deceived him once, they could be deceiving him all the time. And in fact, all of reality was just a dream. The only thing he could be certain of was that he existed because he was thinking. As the saying goes, cogito ergo sum, I think therefore I am. Descartes did in fact use his reasoning to establish a reality not engulfed in deception. However, solipsism as a theory still remained. And the fact is that all one can be sure of is their own thoughts and feelings and sensations. We do not and cannot ever experience someone else's thoughts and consciousness. Sure, we can see others walk and talk and scream and laugh, but could this just be behavioral output with no real consciousness? Could everyone just be an NPC? If you are the only mind that exists, and the chances are all of reality is in your mind and perhaps created by you. Not really ridiculous when you think that your mind already has the power to do this in the likes of dreams. So there you go. You are the only conscious being. You are the only one that exists. Reality is all in your mind, created and sustained by your mind. This is all a dream made by you. So that's it my top five mind-bending philosophies about reality. I hope you enjoyed. Remember, there's debates on all five of these philosophies on the channel. We really analyze them on a philosophical level, so make sure you check out those videos. The links are below. And don't forget to get the Philosophy Vibe Anthology book set, three volumes. This will give you a great all-round look at Western philosophy, covering all the core topics and most influential philosophers. The books are available on Amazon, and the links are below. Drop a comment to let me know your favorite philosophies on reality and if you enjoyed this video please like and share and for more philosophical content please subscribe to the channel take care and i hope to see you in the next video